Hello guys, welcome back to physics, high school physics, and uh, we're working our way vaguely through uh, the Cambridge syllabus, which is um, coded 0625, but hey, it's physics, it doesn't really matter where the syllabus has come from, it's a little bit of physics, and um, today we're going to look at, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at energy, work, and power. All right, so we're going to look at energy, work, and power. We hope to understand different energy types, energy transfer, a couple of equations, and look at resources, efficiency, uh, work done, and power. So quite a bit, um, probably take 20 minutes or so, but um, let's dive in and see how we're going to get on. So we'll have a quick change of screen, and here we go. Right, energy types. Well, I've put energy examples because that's kind of types of energy, isn't it, guys? All right, so energy examples would be energy types. Now, you guys will know a lot already, all right? For instance, if something moves, we call it movement energy, wouldn't be technical enough for physics. So what we do is we call that kinetic energy. Okay, so kinetic energy, is movement. If something moves, if something moves, then it's got kinetic energy. Now, logically, we would abbreviate that to kinetic energy, KE. But for some reason, I, I don't know why, okay, recently we've changed it to energy kinetic. I don't, I, I, I'm at a mystery. It's a mystery to me why it would be changed. Right. If it's called kinetic energy, I would call it KE. Right. What was it? Yoda named it energy kinetic. It is. All right. But anyhow, it's what it is. Now, pretty easy that one, isn't it, guys? The equation for that, we're going to dive straight into that, is equal to a half mv squared. All right. Nothing complicated about that. Mass and velocity. Okay. Now, another quite technical one is potential energy. All right, and there's different types of this, but as in physics, um, we're a little bit vague at times, and other times we're really, really precise. Potential energy, this is often called gravitational potential energy. Okay, now, once again, I would call it potential energy, but somehow or other, it's now been changed to energy potential. And it's equal to the mass of the object, the gravity, and the height you lift it to. So the bigger the object, the higher you lift it, the more potential energy it's going to have. You're not going to change gravity too easily, are you guys? Not unless you go to another planet or something. So, or disappear into space. Um, that's potential energy. And this is gravitational because look, you can see here mg, mass times gravity, is the weight. Yeah, and weight is a force due to gravity. So that's where it comes from. So we've got potential energy. It's sometimes even written with a G in front of it. So sometimes it's called GEP, all right? Because the thing is, guys, you can have potential energy, because potential means stored. That's what that means. You can have stored energy in, 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 the, in the form of strain energy, yeah? So strain energy, um, is the type of thing you get when you stretch a rubber band or an elastic band, okay? It's under strain and the energy is being stored inside it, all right? Or you get that inside a spring, okay? So if you were to get your, your trusty train out and turn this round, then underneath here, there's a spring. There's a spring inside the unit here. And the spring is, Drawing the energy. Okay, guys. Brilliant. Right, other types of energy include uh, chemical energy, that's like in fuel or food. Yeah, chemical energy, that's a good one. Um, and then we can get nuclear energy from nuclear fusion or nuclear fission. And then we get something called internal energy. 
And this is caused by an event or a process. So like heat, all right? Heat is caused by a chemical process or an event like a fire, which is a chemical process. Okay, easy peasy. They're basically our types of energy. They're most of the ones we deal with. We've got um, electrical energy. Okay, we can put that in there. All right, we've got electrical, and you can probably think of one or two others, but these are the ones from our syllabus. So energy um, can be um, electrical. I'm gonna just put that, electrical energy, okay. Internal energy will include light as well, because heat, if you get enough of it, turns into light. Right, resources. Um, chemical energy comes from fuel. So fuel is a resource, okay? And we can get biofuel, which is made from things like um, sugar cane, sugar beet, something which we grow and then um, turn into alcohol usually and make ethanol. So we get fuel, which is biofuels, and we get fuels which are um, carbon-based, which are coal and oil, etc. And these types of fuel are grouped together as chemical energy. Water is a resource, not only for drinking, but we get hydro, hydroelectricity, we can get tidal energy, where you use the tide coming in and out in order to turn turbines. And of course you can use wave energy where you actually harness the movement of the waves. Wave energy, I mean, they're all hydro, aren't they guys? But we, we, we kind of keep the hydro for dams. The tidal is when the tide comes in, we, we use it to gener generate electricity as the tide is moving. And wave energy, that's different from tidal because the waves, you can have waves at low tide or high tide, or you can have a high tide and no waves at all, etc. Okay, so hydro usually depends upon rainfall, can be unpredictable. You can live in a country where they have hydro, but if, if they have a drought, you then have no power and no water. Tidal, very, very predictable. Guys, we, we can predict the tide, what the tide's gonna be in 500 years time, or what the tide was 500 years ago, all right? Tide is very predictable. Wave, depends upon the weather, and once again, a little bit unpredictable. So tidal is very, very good for predictability, but very expensive and very difficult to produce, all right? Geothermal, another type of resource. Geo, from the earth, thermal, heat. So if you've got a volcanic hotspot, you can put some pipes down. Um, Iceland's a great place for geothermal, and um, as is New Zealand and a few other places around the world. There's plenty of geothermal. You don't actually have to be living on top of a volcano to make it work. Yeah, Most countries could drill down and get some geothermal working. Uh, great source of energy, very predictable, and um, relatively cheap once you've actually got it working. We can get nuclear power stations, okay? And at the moment, our nuclear power stations are using nuclear fission, all right? That's when something breaks down uh, into something new. And as the unstable element disintegrates, it produces heat and some other products. Um, no emissions, no greenhouse gases, but we get nuclear waste, which is a bit of a nuisance. Okay, moving on, we've got um, heat and light from the sun. So the sun will give us heat and light, obviously. And then we get wind energy. All right, so we're quite happy with the sun. We don't spend too much time on that. And then wind energy, great for, form of energy because the wind blows at nighttime. I would say it's better than solar in lots of ways because you tend to want your energy when the sun isn't shining. You tend to want, to want, you want more energy at nighttime. Yeah, so the wind can blow at night as well as in the daytime. So wind is good. Um, once you've constructed your wind farms, then... Um, very little pollution. It makes pollution in the construction, but once it's operating, wind is really good. 
And we tend to have windier weather in the winter when we need more power. That's a win. Yeah. Okay, good. That's the wind energy. All right, guys. Um, so if we look at these, we have to look at their cost and the scale of them and the effect it has on the environment. Okay. Now, all of these are formed by the sun, apart from geothermal, nuclear, and tidal. They all come from the sun. Yeah, the fuel comes from the sun. Okay. Everything comes from the sun apart from the geothermal, the nuclear, and in the uh, in the syllabus it says the tidal doesn't come from the sun. Guys, that's a contentious issue because the tides are caused by the sun and the moon. Therefore, the tide is caused by the sun. We could argue that. We could be pedantic. But if the syllabus says, and if you're studying Cambridge, if the syllabus says tidal isn't from the sun, well, let's stick to the game plan and write that down. Okay? So, now you'll, some of you guys will say, well, they're all renewable, right? If we look at these, they're all renewable. Okay? So we're going to get onto that in a minute. Um, the cost of them, well, carbon is relatively cheap. And it's, it's a high density energy, okay? So petrol has got plenty of energy in it. Oil has, okay? Gas hasn't got quite so much, yeah? So these carbon-based fuels have heaps of energy in them, right? They're energy dense. Wood gives lots and lots of heat, all right? So they're great for running things on, but they produce a lot of greenhouse gases and a lot of pollution, which is a problem. Biofuel is good. OK, apart from when we end up turning food into fuel, um, which is an issue, isn't it, guys? If we, we need to feed everybody. So we don't want to be taking food off people to run um, SUVs and whatever. So biofuel is good, but we need to have colossal fields set aside for grow, growing fuel. All right. So when you crunch the numbers on how much biofuel is needed for say a car, you need acres and acres or hectares and hectares of ground in order to get your biofuel working. So biofuel is good, takes the CO2 out of the atmosphere, then puts it back in when it's burnt, but problem because it's, it's um, food. Water, hydro is good, you build the dam, then it's relatively cheap to run. Yep, um, Canada has some great hydro plants, Nice cheap power view on the west coast of Canada, a lot of dams around there. Um, all goes well until it stops raining, but I, I don't think it stops raining in Vancouver and around that area. They seem to have plenty of rain, a little bit too much sometimes. So hydro is great. Once you built your dams, um, then job done. And you can just keep generating power day and night and they'll come online very, very quickly. Tidal. Well, if you go and put a big barrier across an ocean, uh, you know, an inlet to a river, the environmental impact is phenomenal. Um, and then you've got problems, problems with ships getting in as well. Waves, you've got to have some pretty, um, pretty serious uh, engineering guys to, to stick something out in the ocean, which doesn't sink or doesn't get run into by a, a ship, um, and then get the energy turning into electricity. So expensive, wave energy is expensive, difficult to maintain. Okay, nuclear fission, we've been doing that for decades, nice and easy, very straightforward, but the byproducts, even though they're not greenhouse gases, are a bit of an issue. So uh, the byproducts can be used for bombs, which is not such a good look. And um, the waste material, what we tend to do is we do tend to take the waste material mix it up with liquid glass and then let the glass cool so it, it forms a solid wrap it up in steel and then drill a hole deep in the ground where there's radioactivity already so in scotland for instance there's a lot of radioactivity there naturally from the granite and so they just drill a hole and, and put it there with the rest of the radiation okay uh, the sun produces heaps of energy for us uh, with um, these forms of energy, but also um, solar panels. Yeah, once again, solar panels are great in the daytime, but you need a big storage facility to store that energy. 
Okay, wind, we discussed that. Wind farms are brilliant, have an impact there. They have an impact visually. They have an impact on shipping if they're out to sea. They affect the birds. They, they will chop the birds up as they try and navigate through. They've got these migration routes, which they've been using for thousands of years. And not, not the same bird, guys. It's not a bird which is a thousand years old. You know. Anyhow, so the wind turbines, and they upset the birds and, of course, can affect, um, upset the sea life. Uh, some people find them very pretty and aesthetic to look at. Other people think they're pretty ugly. So they all come with a cost, okay? Um, and we need some really large scale ones. Biofuel is a massive scale. Wind is a massive scale, okay? Um, nuclear could be quite small. So they all have a, a cost and it's a balancing act to, to see which ones we're going to use. Okay, which are renewable? You could say they're all renewable, but when we say renewable, it means can we replace it in our lifetime? Okay, now coal, yes, it's renewable if you want to wait around for a few million years, okay, but it's not renewable. Oil, not renewable because we can't renew it in our lifetime. Wind, yes, we can. Okay, tidal, yes. All right, geothermal, well, you can extract a lot of heat out of the ground and it can cool down. All right, but generally, due to plate tectonics and what happens under the um, surface of the earth, it can get topped up, all right? So we, we do say that's renewable. Biofuel is renewable, okay? Hydro, if it carries on raining, we can renew it and so on. So some of these are renewable, some of them are not. Think about, can it be replaced in your lifetime, all right? So the carbon-based fuels, gas, oil, coal, cannot be, all right? Good stuff. Right, um, in the sun, in the sun itself, this does rely upon fusion. And with fusion in the sun, we join together, we join together atoms, we join together hydrogen to make helium, and that releases energy. Difficult to do that on Earth. It has been done, but it's very, very difficult. So on Earth, we use fission, mostly. Fusion, we're working on. All right, good. Moving on. We'll find our next page. Efficiency. Efficiency, nice and easy. Let's speed it up a bit here, guys. Efficiency is going to be equal to the output, output divided by the input times 100. And the mathematicians like to put it over one. Yeah, ask your math teacher why they do that. All right. So that's how they like to do it. The output divided by the input times 100 over one. Okay. So Look, if you put in 100 joules, but you only get out 50 joules, 50 divided by 100 times 100 over 1 gives you 50%. Okay, it's what you get out divided by what you put in. And you can calculate those in your examples and um, get those sorted out. Pretty straightforward here. All right, just practice those questions. Work done. Work done. We just call it W. Work done, you know this, but you might not realize you know it, equals force times distance. Okay, work done equals force times distance. Think about it, guys. If you're, if you're bringing the shopping home, all right, someone says, do you bring the shopping in from the car? The heavier the shopping, the further you have to carry it, the more work is done. Oh yeah, that makes sense, okay? You've got loads of shopping. It, it's got a big weight. Weight is a force, but carry it a long way. More work done. Easy. Okay. So work done. We sometimes say delta E, but it's measured in joules. All right. And we use the joule as our unit. And then power is the work done. which we call delta E, change in energy, the work done, the change in the energy, divided by the time taken. That's it, okay? So that would be joules over seconds, which would be joules per second, or joules per second, all right? Power, 
if you're more powerful, you can get the job done quicker. If you get a machine to do something for you, it'll do it quicker, usually. All right. So power is measured in what? What? Not what? No, what? Yeah. So if you look at a light bulb, OK, or you've got something nearby with the power label on it, it quite often says max 40 watts. That means do not put in any light bulb more powerful than 40 watts. Pretty straightforward there. Right, any questions? Any questions? Well, if there are some, you just put them in the chat and we'll see if someone can answer them for you. And um, that's it for efficiency, work done and power. Let's have a quick look at our hit list. Did we cover everything? Yes, we have, all right? We've understand different energy types. Didn't talk much about the transfer and we didn't talk much about equations, okay? So we're gonna cover that quickly now. Transfer is as simple as this, guys. Getting back to our train, okay? This morning when I had my breakfast, I got chemical energy which came into my body, all right? Now, that food was grown due to the sun. So the energy started off at solar, all right? It turned into food, which is chemical energy. The chemical energy makes my hand move. That's kinetic energy. That makes the key move. That's kinetic energy. The energy is stored in here in that spring, which is potential energy. And if this is on a track, we'd get kinetic energy, sound, and there's some friction, so we get some heat. That's our energy transfer. That's all it is, is all the different links and the equations that we use. I'm pretty sure we mentioned equations, but I'll just check. We did mention them, but just quickly, guys. Uh, if you've got um, a cliff and you've got an object at the top here, it's got potential energy, energy potential it has, MGH. Okay. And as it whew, falls off down to here, just a gnat's crotch it before it impacts. All of that energy is turned into kinetic energy. Okay. So the mass times gravity times height is equal to the kinetic energy. Okay. Now, sometimes if you do an equation like this, they won't tell you the mass. You don't need to know the mass, guys, because look, it cancels out. So if you're not told the mass, don't panic. You can still work out the velocity or the height. All right, G, we, we know G, don't we? All right, so that's energy transfer. There's our two little, little equations, and these are the ones we mostly use. And usually it's a change of potential into kinetic. It can be the other way around. We can hoof something up in the air, see how high it gets. All right, but either way, there are equations. Have we covered efficiency? Um, yes, we have. And we're going to have a little quick flick around on the screen here. So um, we have checked out these other things. We looked at all the energy types, a quick look at transfer of energy. The equations, this is simply all we need to do. Resources, we spent quite a lot of time at. Efficiency is output divided by input times 100 over 1. The work done force times distance, you know that that's kind of logical now, isn't it? Yeah, you guys can think about that. And the work done is just going to be the force times the distance and the power is measured in watts. And that's joules per second. Okay, well done, everybody. If you've got any questions, uh, ping it into the chat, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks, everybody. Let's hit that button. Goodbye. <laughs>